one of my viewers had set up a, a a calendar for people to call like every five minutes call finra every five minutes call sec and and, and yep. end up getting his phone number blocked <laughs> so like he calls doesn't go through anymore so he has to go from like a google account and then they block that one <laughs> so you know they they're they're actively known they're like i know i know those call center people go you know finra this is so-and-so and i go oh god oh, another one of mmtlp people we can't yeah. talk to you click and and that's what they do and and the poor the poor little call center guys the brokers you, you call a broker every five minutes and you'll get a different answer every five minutes from them because they have no idea what's going on they just know that their lives yeah. are being made miserable by by these sixty five thousand investors who you know want to know what's going on and stuff yeah yes yeah. so what yeah. answers man yeah we have answers and yeah. and i i think i personally think getting members of the senate and house finance committee folks involved and on this is, is really important and and i'm still trying to get everything together and organize i, I want to make like a, a 501c3 or something that's that's sort of a lobbying group specifically for retail investors because we, we that's, a, that's exactly that's exactly my plan yeah um and that's what I pitched to Jeremy Frommer. Now, I will tell you, you may want to stay in this, brother. And Jeremy Frommer is working on the CEO block. And that, if you can go to that town hall, that's yeah. actually what he's talking about doing. He's taking CEO blocks to the next level to be a 501 uh, yeah. 3C and get the lobbying. Because I agree, we need to lobby the yeah. crap out of them. But we need a lobbying firm that continuously lobbies for retail. Exactly. And he's pushing He's pushing for an investigate, you know, putting together, getting the... Uh, the Congress to put together an investigative team, yeah. you know, that they have to start actually truly investigating. And that's the pressure we need to apply. Yeah, so, and, and this, this is one of those things like, like it is one of the few bipartisan issues you can get members on both sides to agree upon is, is proper regulation of the markets. And, right. and granted you got, you also have on both sides groups that do their insider trading and, and things like that. But, but it's about split split halfway down the middle and party affiliation really has nothing to do with it about trying to stop trading among members of Congress and their families, uh, trying to to make meaningful regulations that are properly enforced across these things. And a lot of them, um, you know, there's a few that are that are that are heavily involved it, with with keeping up on the news on this stuff. But there's a lot of them that, that aren't. And while they might be on our side, they don't specifically know what's happening to retail investors at the hands of these hedge funds and brokerages, institutions. And, and if, if you can point out to them, hey, you know, we understand you're getting money from the super PAC that is funded by hedge funds. On the retail side, we can provide just as much campaign financing. And so why don't you listen to us? Because when they get blown up, we get all their money. And we'll, have, we'll be able to pay for a lot of campaign financing. And um, and sort of like sweeten that pot for them. That yes, these are your voters and they're providing money for your, your campaigns. And sort of set it up as a single issue uh, 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 lobbying effort. Like not paying attention to any other side of politics, not paying attention to universal health care or abortion or anything else. Like just members of Congress who are on board with helping retail investors. And uh, I, I personally think that's, that's probably one of the best methods we can do because we don't have the power. We gotta, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta pay to play. Right. That's just the, the sad part Pretty of much. our politics. Yep. Yeah. And if we can come together and unite, so that mm -hmm. was the other thing, even Charles Payne said it, you know, and I was, that's why I reached out to you and said, I want to talk to you because you and I have never talked. I want to see where your head's at. Yeah. I've watched some of your videos and stuff, but I've, people have opinions about you just like they do me. I've heard good and bad, <laughs> um, but I always like to find out. And so yeah. when we can connect, if we can get all of these people to really focus their firepower and their way of thinking and set aside your stock for a minute yeah. and really focus, because Here's the thing. So 65,000 people on MLTLP, our population is what, 360 million? Yeah. Um, that's a drop in the hat. Congress yep. doesn't give a shit. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if you have cussing on here or not, but hey, Congress doesn't yeah. care. <laughs> Congress doesn't care about 65,000 people. Yeah. And then even with the AMC community, Adam Aaron said three to four million people. Yeah. We don't know what that real number is. Yeah. I don't know that for sure on GME, maybe it's two, 300,000, half a million. Yeah. Um, you know, you got GTI, but really how many retail investors are there that are screwed up in some stock? They're yeah. not listening. They're not paying attention. We are a, we're a pimple on them. Yeah. You know, it does it because we're spread out. 
and you know whatever and so until we get loud enough and we unite around one solid mission like you're saying yeah. where we're going to lobby and all of the pressures applied all of our money everything we can put together um they're not going to listen to us yeah and they're the only ones that can help us yeah. gary gensler said it and it's like yeah. he literally said it in that interview with uh um what's his name i can't think of his name all of a sudden the uh former uh oh, dave, dave lauer no, no, oh. the other guy that jumped, come into our picture to get some video footage. Um, he started his own show. Oh. He used to, um, God dang it, what's his name? Can't believe I can't remember his name. Anyway, yeah, he did the interview with him a while back. He got him to come on and he talked to him. And yeah. Gary Gensler said that he doesn't have the fire, he doesn't have the resources nor the uh, means. Yeah. And then these big hedge funds basically got the money and the lawyers. And that's what happens. Every time he wants to do something, they shut him down with the money. And he needs Congress to step in and enact laws. Um, yeah, Congress is the only one that can shut them down. And so, I want to, I want to, I want to write a piece of legislation. Call it the Retail Investors Protection Act, RIPA. And yeah. uh, you know, parts of it will be specific legis legislation about what you know these market makers and hedge funds can and can't do. So, you know, no more naked selling of any kind. I don't care about liquidity. If you want liquidity, raise the price. People will come up with stock. That's how you raise liquidity. You don't do it by inventing stock from thin air. And selling that to people, uh, so like you know, and 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 the, and the punishments have to be meaningful. They can't be like, well, you're naked shorted. It'll be forty cents. Make it. Oh, you you provided FTD. Okay, um, you owe two hundred percent the value of the FTD to the person that you sold this thing to, and if you do it three times, you lose your license. That's it. Your company can't exist anymore. Yep. Things like that. Jail time, brother. Yeah. Jail time. Jail time. Yeah. You, you go to yep. prison. You got it. You you know what the CEOs and executives. This is yep. the world I come from when you talk about money from the top down yeah. if you take out the top and they're going to be punished at a severe level because they don't now they're publicly yeah. ran companies just like pg e where i came from the west coast they got convicted of all those yeah. killings and those murders of those people from that town burning down yeah. where i came from that area but nobody went to jail it just goes on pg e's record the stock's back up over 14 six, 14 15 bucks yeah. everybody still got bonuses and all those people had lost loved ones yeah so we got, that's what I want to push for. These guys, if you if you get a, a third strike and your corporation and you're the executive or you're the CEO, they got to get jail yeah, time. Going to jail. I mean, I mean if, yep. if you're, if you're going to count corporations as, as people, which what Citizen United has, then let's convict them like people. Yep. <laughs> you know, if I, if, if my negligence uh, killed 85 people in a fire, I'd be in prison right now. So yes, you yeah, why, why is a corporation that ignored upkeep on their power lines for a hundred years uh, <laughs> get get to get away with that? Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, stopping the naked trading. Uh, next up is limiting dark pools entirely. Every trade must be oh, lit. Man. We must know the price. So I don't care about paying for order flow, whatever. If a price is made, it gets reported and gets reflected. Um, uh, uh no more swaps. No, none, none of these debt swaps or equity swaps. Where if you do have an FTD and you're about to get have to have the punishment, you just you trade that. Away? <laughs> it's, you, tra you just trade that debt with someone else and it resets the whole clock. Get rid of that stuff. Um, uh, give the SEC enforcement power. Oh, got a good deal. I'm on a call. You're going to the floor right now. Four-year-olds. That's all right. No, keep going, brother. Yeah. You're right on. Yeah, uh, you're spot give, on. Give the, give the SEC uh, prosecutor powers and in, in, in law enforcement powers. What what they don't have right now is that ability. Best they can do is levy a fine, and that fine is toothless. But or recommend criminal investigations to the FBI. And the FBI does it. I want the SEC to to have guys with badges and guns, and so that when they say do this, and the and and the comp and the corporation the you know, the, the, the market maker, whoever doesn't do it, they come put them in handcuffs and perp walk them out the front doors, front TV cameras. Right now they're like, you know who, yeah. You know who has guns and badges? Freaking IRS. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they can come, they can come arrest me because I'm selling crypto or I'm doing something and making some money over on my yep. place. If I don't pay my proper taxes, they literally have the right yep. to use deadly force to come and get us, the yeah. average Joe, but the SEC can't go after these freaking white collar crimes. Yeah. So I agree, man. Yeah. Strap them on. Give them. Give them a badge. They should have an yeah. SEC enforcement team. Absolutely. Oh, it's it's incredibly silly. Like, uh, uh, SBF from FTX. So many 
Oh, acronyms. Yeah. acronyms. Um, you were in the government, you know. Uh, uh, he's what busted him was selling Bitcoin that didn't exist. Everything else yep. he did was totally legal because there's no regulations in, in, for the US economy. But it was him selling Bitcoin that didn't exist that was fraud. And that's what got him arrested. Well, we have market makers selling a hundred billion dollars or more per market maker of stock that doesn't exist. Yet that's not fraud, right? So why is it fraud when SBF does it with fake funny money, but not when an actual market maker does it with a tangible corporation that exists? So well, that and why are they focused on the coins? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they're so focused on. Did you read the article last night? Uh, Paul Pierce, the Boston uh, Boston uh, Celtics former basketball player. He oh. was promoting, uh, he was promoting, um, it was uh, crypto, it was Ethereum Max, I think mm-hmm. it was some coin. He just paid a one, he's paying a $1.2 million fine to the SEC because he was attached and he didn't, reg- he didn't uh, report it properly that he was getting paid to promote this. Just like, it was the same one that the chick, what's her name? Uh, oh, um, um, uh, crap. Kardashian. Car- yeah, Kim Kardashian. Yeah, and yeah, Kim Kardashian. Kim- like Kim Kardashian put this as a paid advertisement and they still said still find her. <laughs> but they're going yeah. after it because it's a wild west. Yeah. There's no regulation. There's no control. And it's yeah. probably because it's not benefiting them. Yeah. You know, the government, the, the uh, Congress people, whoever, they're not getting any benefit out of it. And so they want to keep going after it. And it's like, well, wait a minute. You got your own. Clean up your, your freaking own backyard, man. Yeah. You yeah. Know I mean? But, you know, they, they, they'll go after a Kim Kardashian or a Paul Pierce. But they won't go after, uh, uh, you know, Ken Griffin 